This is Doug DeMuro, and today I'm going to do an interesting video, hard things that you don't realize are difficult about making car videos. Everybody always says to me, oh, your job is the coolest in the world, I would love to do that, and it really is, it's the best, but it's not always easy, and there are some aspects that are difficult that you probably don't even think about. And so today I'm going to give you a little behind the scenes at kind of some of the stuff that's hard about doing my job. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And you should, because we've had some great sales recently, including this electric Hummer pickup sold for $235,000. This fantastic 80 series Land Cruiser sold for $33,000. There's a lot of interest in the 80 series right now. And this wonderful Sprinter van sold for just under $50,000. We do great with vans and camper vans on cars and bids. So if you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. Check it out at carsandbids.com. Okay, so hard things about filming car videos. Now I want to make it very clear, I'm not complaining. People are going to be like, oh, Dad, poor Dad, he's complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just, I think it's interesting. I mean, people are always interested in what's going on behind the scenes in everything, but also in these videos and how do they work and, you know, what's it like. And so here are some things that maybe you don't think about when you think, hey, you know, what is actually going on in Doug's world? How does this job actually work? And what is difficult about it? Obviously, you see what's fun about it, driving these cars and finding all the quirks and getting to check out and experience all these vehicles I have always wanted to since I was a kid, but there must be some hard stuff, or maybe not, I don't know, but we'll see. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you what I think's hard. Okay, so number one, <laughs> these aren't really in order, but this is probably the thing that I struggle with the most, especially now, and that would be finding a location to film. <laughs> you might be surprised. This is really challenging. Um, basically, what happens in my life is I, I film cars in two different types of ways. One is that the automakers send press cars to my house and I can go and film them in a location that I have here in San Diego. And I got a couple locations here in San Diego that I can use to go film videos. This is where I live. And so it's easy to figure, that, that's, that's easy. I, I go to my spot, I film the video, it's all good. But about half my videos are filmed not here, not with cars that come to my house. They're filmed somewhere else. And in that situation, it's challenging to find a filming location. And it's more challenging than you might think. You're thinking, well, why don't you just go to a park and set up a camera and film? It doesn't work that way. So you take a car. I'm filming one of my videos. I drive the car for a while, but I film static in one location for a while too. Obviously driving the car, you can kind of go wherever. But if you're filming static, you can't just show up at a park because if you show up at a park with a cool car and a video camera on a tripod, the world needs to know what you're doing. Hey man, you filming a commercial? Yo, what's going on? Yo, cool, can I be in it? It's unbelievable how difficult it is to get this done without being interrupted. And I'm a really nice person. People meet me on this, I'd like to think. People meet me on the street and they say, you know, they recognize me and they get all excited and you go and take a picture and the answer is always yes and it's always fine. But when I'm filming, it's a little bit of a different situation because there's a lot of concentration that has to happen. It's harder than you think to sit and look at a camera and think, remember stuff and talk and be animated and, you know, speak in a clear manner. Often I get words wrong, like one single word in a video and I'll get destroyed for it in the comments. So you have to, you just have to be paying attention so much that I really don't like getting interrupted when I'm making my videos. And so um, that's hard. So then you're thinking, okay, if a public place is out, what do you do? And the answer is, that's the problem. So finding spots is tough um, for that reason, because if you go to a public place, you'll get interrupted. But then also, if you go to a private place, you'll get kicked out. And I cannot tell you how many times I got kicked out. I've been, this still happens. It happened a couple weeks ago, uh, where I get kicked out of like, I, I like to find like church parking lots, like the back of a church where you can't like see it from the street or whatever. And just, it, I'm there for four hours with my camera. I don't move the car. I'm not like doing burnouts or anything. I do all my driving stuff on the street. I just want to sit there and film the video. But people get very upset about this. And so that's a problem too. So you, you can't go to some office building or something. Security will come out. And it's always funny to me when security comes out to talk to me. 
which happens at least once a month. Um, <laughs> they'll always they'll like kick me out, and I'm thinking to myself like I got <laughs> I got a billion views and four and a half million subscribers, <laughs> and I'm getting kicked out of a Lutheran church in the suburbs. <laughs> It's just kind of a funny dichotomy. You're like, like if, if people knew, they'd probably be like, yeah, it's okay, whatever. But it's tough. And, and the, the big problem is people are always like, oh, well, why don't you come over to my house and film? But the problem is I do these in various places. So I'll go to one neighborhood in LA and I don't know anybody there, you know? And, and I'll go to one other spot. And it, it's just, it's difficult to find places everywhere, especially when I travel for press events or whatever. I recently filmed the Ford Lightning in San Antonio. I just have to find a location and that's tough. Now, I have gotten incredibly good at going on Google Maps and locating somewhere that I think I can shoot. And I pretty much am always correct at this point, but for the first couple of years especially, it was tough and I would get kicked out or other problems would happen. Like I thought, choose a location, it's all good. And then it turns out that the train runs by it or whatever. It's Location finding is tough. Now, I will say one thing about location finding before moving on to the other difficult stuff. I, this is bizarre, but some people have noticed it. Uh, I tend to look for Mormon churches. Um, say, I am not a Mormon, uh, but say what you will about the Mormon faith, <laughs> the people are really nice. And so I get kicked out of most churches I go film at. However, uh, Mormon churches I have found don't kick me out. In fact, several times I've been shooting in the parking lot of a Mormon church and someone has walked out and walked towards me and I'm like, oh, here we go. And they come out and say, hey, do, do you need any water? <laughs> Like, what the heck is this? What is going on here? So I, I do seek out, believe it or not, I do seek out Mormon churches specifically to film my videos. And you can see it in a lot of videos that I do. And Mormons especially will contact me and say, hey, I noticed you're in front of Mormon church in this video, in this video, in this video, are you a Mormon? The answer is no, but I have found that they're just a little bit more lenient about letting me film. In fact, I've never been kicked out of a Mormon church parking lot. Okay, next thing that could be difficult about filming the videos, uh, weather. Huh. So you've, found the spot to film, and then it starts raining. <laughs> and, and boy, is this an issue. So I, I actually probably should talk first about scheduling, which is the other hard part. Scheduling is a challenge for my videos. My schedule is really, really tight. So in addition to making my car reviews, I also run cars and bids, and I'm incredibly involved day to day in cars and bids. And so I'm trying to run a business. Cars and Bids now has like 15 employees. It's like a real business. <laughs> and I'm also trying to film these videos. <laughs> Which is all the more fun that I get kicked out of church parking lots. So like, listen, I, I got like 15 <laughs> I'm not some idiot here, but they think I, anyway. Scheduling is tough because there's a lot going on in my life. And so often I will have to schedule stuff back to back to back to back to back, and it's tough. I'm pretty much the only car reviewer who's doing three videos per week, three car reviews per week. It's very difficult. Um, think, just think about the amount of content required. And since I started filming two videos a week back in 2016, I've never taken a week off. I've never even taken a day off. I've had two videos a week go up every single day through vacations, through illnesses, through COVID, through the birth of my son. I have had two videos Tuesday and Thursday every single week for now it's been over six years. That, that's hard. In order to do that, you gotta shoot way ahead of schedule because if you wanna go on vacation or if you get sick or if you break an arm, you can't shoot. And so I just have to be constantly, constantly, constantly filming videos. And so scheduling is tough. And as a result, when I schedule my videos, I'm like, boom, this is this, this is this, this is this. And it just has to happen that way because if it doesn't, I, I got videos the next four days, I can't come back, I can't, it just won't work. And that makes it tough. And, and, and it's really hard. And I think a lot of people that I work with, a lot of people that have owned the cars, a lot of people watching don't really understand how difficult that is, how difficult that part is. And so sometimes people don't respect that. Um, and I've had people cancel the day before. And when you do that, it is so frustrating to me because I have this incredibly tight schedule that I have to fulfill. And if I lose one, I was planning on that going up that day and whatever. And, and it's like a cascading effect that really screws me up. Oh, let's reschedule for tomorrow. It's like, no, I got a video tomorrow and the day after and the day after, and then I'm traveling to Texas for videos. And then I'm coming home and I'm going on vacation and it won't be able to fill it for like a month. I need this today. So I, people have canceled on me last minute and I blocked their numbers and never speak to them again. I'm dead serious. It's just too, it's, it's really annoying. <laughs> so. With that in mind, with how difficult scheduling is in mind, you also then have to think about weather. So let's say you've got the schedule. 
you got it done. We're gonna meet on Monday. I got videos on Tuesday and Sunday, but I got Monday for this video, this car, got it done, got it scheduled. Great. Then I picked up the car from wherever and I went and found a location, probably a nice Mormon church in suburban Austin, Texas, whatever. Then I'm there. So I got the car, I got the date, I got the location, I'm all good, I'm ready to film, and then it starts raining. <laughs> and ah, that's really annoying. It's weird, my job is outside. Most of my, the people I know sit in an office every day. <laughs> Working outside is unusual. It's, it's something people do, you know, bricklayers. <laughs> that, that's me also. The difference is they won't work in really bad weather. They'll wait till the next day. But because of my scheduling constraints, I don't usually have that option. So I have filmed some videos in some wild weather situations. The very best example of this, uh, there's two great ones. One is the new WRX, which I filmed in December in Northern California, and it simply rained all day. It didn't ever let up. It didn't ever stop. It rained all day. And... I've been in filming in rain before and it's never been that big a deal. It's annoying, but you get through it. However, on that shoot, it was raining so much, so consistently that my camera broke. I carry backups of everything everywhere at all times, but that was one of my very first trips to go film in a long time. Like trips stopped with COVID and they didn't come back for like two years. And I just hadn't brought a backup. I hadn't thought about it. I was rusty on my travel. So my camera broke for the rain. And when that happens, I have only one option, and that is um, I have to buy a new camera on the spot. I just do. That's why I bring a backup with me everywhere. Backups for cameras, for microphones, for tripods, all of it. I just didn't have it, but I gotta film this video. I'm leaving the next day. The car is in high demand. The video's gonna be in high demand. I have to get it done. I have to buy a camera. So that day, um, I'm in this small Northern California town with no services. There's no Target, there's no anything. Um, and so I had to drive like 30 minutes in the new WRX, in the rain, in heavy traffic to a camera store, soaking wet, walk in with my microphone still attached. Hey, can I buy a camera? And they had one and they sold it to me and I plugged it in and I finished filming the video in a Mormon church parking lot um, and I got it done. And I, my, my camera was gone. Now, a couple days later, I checked that camera again, the one that broke, and it worked. It dried out and it worked and I'm using it right now. But the point is, that's the kind of thing that can happen and that's the kind of punches you sometimes have to roll with. The other crazy weather story for me was when I reviewed the C8 Corvette. So I reviewed the C8 um, a little over two years ago. And back then in the history of my channel, the automakers didn't really take YouTubers seriously. And it was incredibly difficult to get a seat in the C8. GM just wouldn't play ball. They didn't care. They didn't care about me. They didn't want to work with me. It was the reality. And so I went to the C8 event, the press launch in Las Vegas, and I said, look, I need five hours alone with the car. And they said, eh, well, whatever. They said, all right, fine, we can squeeze you in, but you have only five hours on this day, and you just do it, you know? And it was like, okay. So I took the car that morning, and I found a location the prior night. I had driven to Vegas, found a location, figured it would be good. And I was all set, <clears throat> picked up the car, drove it to the location, and the location turned out to be in the flight path for McCarran Airport in Las Vegas. And I didn't realize that, which was a stupid two years ago mistake that I would never make now. But the point is, it was. So I'm filming the hot, most hotly desired car on the market, and I have a very limited time frame in which to do it. And the planes are relentlessly flying over. Boom, 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 airplane and then it starts raining. So I'm sitting there in the rain, and in the few seconds I have between airplane takeoffs, I'm trying to get through lines, and it's pouring rain. And you watch that video, and you can see, like, I'm getting frustrated, it is pouring, it's absolutely crazy rain. Sometimes I was just laughing because it was all so stupid. Meanwhile, I'm up against the clock, and GM actually sent a guy with me to, like, monitor me to make sure I wasn't, you know, stealing the car. There was that level of, you know, kind of, who is this idiot? And, I sat there and I got it done, um, and it was hellish and it was difficult, but I, I got it done, and I, I, it, was, it was hard, and we made it. That video um, is now at 11 million views, and that's the video that convinced General Motors that, hey, maybe you should work with this guy, and it was other videos like that that have done that, but that's the kind of thing you have to do if you're going to get this done and be a player in this world. Like, you got to work through that, and so when there's bad weather, when scheduling's tough, when locations are hard, you just do it. But there's still two more things that I find pretty difficult about my job that are worth pointing out. Number one is travel. Um, the way that cars are launched to journalists is that the automakers hold a press event in a certain place 
and journalists must travel to get there. Now, I want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that I am the only current car journalist who pays his own way to travel to these events. Everyone else takes the automaker's money to fly and for hotels. I do not. I pay for my own flights and for my own hotels. I just want to make that clear because I think it adds a huge layer of objectivity and nobody else discloses that they get paid by the automakers. But I'm telling you right now, your favorite car reviewer got two grand from the automaker for a flight and a hotel. Anyway, just, but I digress. The hard part isn't the cost. I, the, the, my YouTube channel is very lucrative. I make a good living. The hard part isn't the cost, and I can write it off. The hard part is the time. I mean, if a car company is launching a car in wherever, and it's a very important car, I got to go there. I got to film it. I got to do it. I don't have a choice. So I flew to Washington, D.C. to film the Toyota Supra at Summit Point Raceway in West Virginia, across the country. I flew to wherever to do whatever. I've done a million of these. I've gone on 10 zillion precedents. Um, and that's tough. I got a little baby. I got a business, cars and bids I'm running. I got the rest of the YouTube channel to keep going and make sure it's doing well. And it's hard to spend a day traveling, film a car, and spend a day coming back. And the travel component is challenging. And I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, I was just in San Antonio filming the new Ford F-150 Lightning. Great, video did incredibly well, made good money, everything was good, but I lost three days at home with, with my son and my wife which is tough. And you know, I'm filming this video next week, Sunday I leave actually, this is Memorial Day weekend coming up. I'm filming this video way before you're seeing it. Um, to go and film the Toyota Sequoia and the new Lexus RX and the Hennessy Venom if it works out. Uh, but that's four days in Texas, you know? And then I gotta come back and I gotta go to Phoenix for Cadillac Escalade V. And then I gotta go to Palm Springs for Ford Bronco Raptor. And it's fun to do all these, but it adds up and the travel's tough. And you gotta be first. You know, that's the thing about YouTube. You gotta be first, you gotta be there with a video, boom. But it can be hard, <laughs> really, to do all this traveling. So that's another problem, another hardship that I face. The other one, the other difficult thing, the last difficult thing about my job that you might not realize is um, factual correctness and errors is really tough for a few reasons. Um, for new cars, it's not all that hard. The automaker supplies me with a lot of information, and a lot of information is easily available online. New cars are not all that difficult to get everything right, and I generally do. I occasionally make mistakes in new car videos, but it's rare. The harder one is older cars. 80s and 90s cars, I'm pretty much the only one who's doing reviews on them. Most of my YouTube reviewer colleagues, Throttle House, the Straight Pipes, uh, Car Wow, the other big guys, the Motor Trends and Edmonds of the world, they only review new cars, pretty much. Some of them will make an exception here and there, but pretty much they only review new cars. And the reason for that is, uh, in part, well, for one thing, those videos don't do as well, but in part, they just are tough to research. New cars are in demand by people, and there's a lot of information online. When I do a Mitsubishi 3000 GT, there's not a lot of stuff out there. And some of it is speculative, and some of it is completely contradictory. You see two things on two different places that say contradictory things about why an automaker did something. And the problem when you do one of those videos is, let's say I do the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. That video is not going to be popular. I can get four times as many views on a Ford Maverick video. But 3000 GT, I do it. It is popular with the 3000 GT fans who are instantly available to criticize whatever errors I make. Now, these people are obsessive about this one car, the 3000 GT or whatever it is and they don't watch the other videos. And so they see this video, they see me make a couple mistakes because information is not easily available. And then they say, this guy's an idiot, knows nothing about cars, he's terrible. Okay. But the problem is my variety on my channel is my favorite thing and a lot of viewers' favorite things. And it makes me kind of more susceptible to these mistakes. I'll just give you an example. I'm pulling up a random week on my channel from a couple of years ago. I reviewed in one week, a brand new Ford F-250, then a Spyker C8, then a Camaro ZL1, then an R34 Skyline GTR, then a Mercedes G65, then a 1970s Lamborghini Espada, then a Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk brand new. It is impossible to become an expert on each of those cars. This is all in the span of one month, <laughs> all these videos. It's just not possible. You're not gonna do it. So you're gonna make errors here or there and you get crucified for them, absolutely crucified. And that's one of the things that has pushed me away from doing older car reviews. I've switched more and more towards new car reviews like a lot of my other YouTube you know, colleagues. And I think I'm gonna continue to do that. Um, you just alienate people, they get really mad. And even if you say great things about their special car, you don't, you're still gonna get vilified because you did a one video about it, but they're the expert and you don't know anything. And it's, it's just, it's a tough situation. And so um, 
Factual accuracy and errors about older cars is one of the big challenges. And often the information is simply not available to get things right um, until you find some guy who's like, I knew that, you don't know that? And it's like, well, where were you? You're not on Google, <laughs> you know? And so it's tough. And, and I think that that's, that's, that's a problem. And I think that that's one of the big reasons, like I said, why I'm starting to gravitate towards more new cars and fewer older cars. It just, older cars just kind of create more problems. So anyway, there you go. Those are the big things that I can, are kind of tough day to day in, in my job is uh, uh, scheduling weather and finding location are the tough ones, like literally filming the videos. And then the travel to places can be difficult. And, and then sort of the errors and the factual stuff can, can be a challenge, especially when you have the level of variety that I do. And by the way, one other thing to point out with the factual stuff and the errors, my videos are very fact heavy. A lot of car reviews, and I think one of the reasons that I've become so successful, a lot of, the car, a lot of car reviews are 80% about the way the car feels on the road and how it drives and how it rides, whatever. And my videos are 90%, 95% about like little buttons and features and switches and how this works and how that works. And as a result, my videos are often 20 times more fat heavy than other channels, which means that I'm gonna have a lot more opportunity to make errors. Um, but you know, when you get to that level of detail, you, that sort of thing happens. And I do my best, I try to get as factual and careful as possible, but it's, it's not always possible, especially for these older cars that are just, not, the information is not as available. So. There you go. Those are the difficulties of my channel that you might not think about. The, the difficulties of filming these videos. There's the, the stuff of actually shooting them, the scheduling, the weather, the, the, the travel, and the finding location. And then there's the kind of errors and, and factual stuff that can, that can be problematic. But there are some tough parts about this job. As cool as it might look, it's not always incredibly easy to do. Um, and that's a little insight into some of the tough things.